In February 2014, Penn State beat Michigan here at Pagool in that first year. With two, with one, now they'll know where Penn State's at. The Nittany Lions upset 10th ranked Michigan for their first ever Big Ten win. That was really one of the first wins, if not the first win, where Penn State hockey went from being an idea to something that was really happening. The hockey program here is taking a chance. You thought it was going to be extremely successful. You knew the resources and the coaching staff were in place. But you're never sure until you actually see it come together. This is Penn State's 10th year in the Big Ten, and the Nittany Lions are now a college hockey power. You can't build a program on hopes and dreams. You have to have the financial backing behind that. In September of 2010, Terry and Kim Pagula came to Penn State and said, we've got the money to make your dream possible. One of the best things about this is that you had the support of people from everywhere, like in the university. They were really excited about it. Down high slot, McEachern drags, fires, and scores! There goes the roof! Terry Pagula said that, you know, part of the reason that they didn't put dampening things into the roof or into the ceiling inside the arena is because he wanted it to sound like people were yelling into a tin can. And people say that the Ice Arena is a lot like taking a chunk of Beaver Stadium and putting it inside. They're not making it up. This night, it's going to be remembered by a lot of people forever. So play every single shift the way you want it to be remembered. That's something that you'll never forget, opening a $100 million building. You didn't know what to expect. When we walked out from the tunnel in the first game, and you felt it, not only saw it, but you felt what this was. I mean, you just sort of like, this sure was worth it. This is unbelievable. Jensen lets it fly. They score! You look at the other programs in the Big Ten, they're tremendously successful with huge traditions and followings, etc. And I remember it being written that we weren't going to win a game for three years and we weren't going to score any goals and all this stuff. Probably the most common response we got is, wow, Penn State, awesome, I would love it, but man, I don't, I don't want to lose for four years. And we ended up getting guys that really bought in to wanting to build something and really understood the process and that it wasn't going to be easy. We would see it in practice, You'd see small samples of it in a game, but we were finally able to put, you know, 60 minutes to get results during a game. I remember Coach Fisher and I specifically having conversations about, you know what, that was a step. Like, I'm not sure if everybody in the stands are going to understand it, but we felt that it was a step. Goes right to the goal. Fires blocker away. Morris Pavlich stepped it on. Score! Tie game! Tie game! Nikita Pavlich sends this crowd into a frenzy! Our first four years in the league, our win total went from 8 to 18 to 21 to 25. Our win totals certainly mirrored the fact that the culture just kept building and building and that we never forgot who we are. I know everyone outside of the program was, how is Penn State doing this? We can't believe it's Penn State. If you're around it, you just knew it was going to happen. The 2016-17 season, the weird thing about that team was we were so young. I think we played 11 freshmen. There was a real feel that they were here, that they were going to change something on the ice. You felt that way. And he weaves, dangles, fires, scores! Five years into the program, and we're number one team in the country. I got a call from a radio station back home in northern Minnesota because we were the number one ranked team in the country and I was assistant coach on it and I was like, this is crazy. We had to beat Minnesota to get to the championship game and we went into double overtime. Dancing in, Brent Gates. Oh, and look what he found. 
There was a save that Peyton Jones made, which was a glove save, wide open net. And at that moment, I think everybody just was like, oh my goodness, like this, this actually might happen. Right in front, Penn State wins it in overtime. Arifadio, the team winning goal. We knew that meant we were going to the NCAA tournament for the first time. And that was an incredible feeling. I remember Ricky DeRose in the locker room between the first and second overtime against Wisconsin. He's like, let's just go win a hockey game. I don't care if it takes five minutes, four periods, we're winning a hockey game. I saw Liam was open for a breakaway. And my only thought in my mind was, catch a pass, catch a pass. I'll never forget my broadcast partner jumping on my shoulders, tackling me down as I'm trying to make the winning call of the goal. The golden goal, Penn State Big Ten champions. <laughs> Your 2017 Big Ten Hockey Tournament champions. It wasn't just the people on the bench. It was everybody that went through to get this done. Whoa, baby! Yeah! There was times where we were having success and then maybe looking at different types of guys. And we always would come back to the most important players, they wouldn't be the guys that were have the highest profiles by any means, but they were certainly the guys that understood what we were about. We had the leadership of the team come to us and say, we don't want to be entitled, promise us that's never going to happen. And it's something that we did. We made them that promise. We've seen over the last 10 years that Penn State's hockey has gone from a program that had an idea of what it wanted to do to a program that has a blueprint on how to do it. This would be their first win in program history over a number one team. Enjoy it, Penn State. We've never really said that to arrive, it's gonna be this. I mean, it's always to do things the right way and see where it takes us. And when you do things the right way, success follows. 